What's up guys, this is Tibu Sakar and welcome to another tutorial on knowledge distillation. In this video, we'll be looking at a new model, distal bird and see how it was trained and how did it help in reducing the size of the original bird model. Let's go back to the graph where we could see the number of parameters of different models. Look at distal bird which is sitting right here, 67, 66 million parameters. It's basically telling us that good language models need not be ridiculously huge. Let's look at distal bird and bird side by side. Wow, the size really dropped from 110 million parameters to 66 million parameters. Training time was almost four times faster than bird. But most importantly, there was only a 3% drop in performance from the original bird model. So overall, 40% smaller, 60% faster at just the cost of 3% drop in accuracy. Pretty good, huh? This proves that decent language models in production need not be in GBs and inference can still be done in milliseconds even with a CPU. Okay, so let's see how Digital Bird was born. This is the teacher-student knowledge distillation setup which I explained in my previous video. We'll put the link in the description in case you want to jump to that first. So basically the teacher model is our birth model whose weights are frozen. And the student model is our new distal birth model. And we define the loss such that the student learns from the teacher and converges faster. Let's jump into more details. So the student model has the same architecture of BERT but with a smaller size. Just that the number of layers is reduced by half. So if the base version of BERT had 12 transformer layers, so this one will have 6. One thing to note here is in order to reduce the size of the model, we could either reduce the dimension size of the hidden layers or reduce the number of hidden layers or do both of them. But here they have focused on reducing only the number of layers since they found that reducing the size of the hidden layers did not give that much of performance boost. This was again because most of the linear algebra operations were so optimized by standard libraries. Also another thing they did to get this student model was to remove the polar layer from the original bird model. What does the polar layer do? Okay, so in addition to the input tokens in the transformer layer, we also prepend a CLS token. This is a special token. CLS stands for classification. So the idea is at the end of the final transform layer, the embedding coming from the CLS token can be taken to do the classification on this entire input sentence. So this polar layer is also removed from the model. Then they also remove the token type embeddings. What are token type embeddings? In BERT, as input, we can represent two sentences in the same input sequence. This is mainly used for training tasks like sentence similarity. The two sentences are separated by a special token called SCP. And in addition to this, we also provide segment IDs. Segment IDs are a sequence of zeros followed by ones corresponding to each token. Zeros tell that these tokens belong to one sentence and ones tell that these uh, tokens belong to another sentence. That's all. So what we're saying is in the student model architecture, this embedding was also removed. Now, how do we initialize the weights on the student model? Well, because the architecture is same as BERT, we can easily take the weights of the BERT model and use that here. Since we were reducing the number of layers by two for making the student model, we can pick one of the two layers from the original BERT and use those weights to initialize in the new student model. So if this is the original BERT model with 12 layers, then in our student model, we will have six layers and the first layer in that will have weights taken from either of these two layers. And the second will have the weights taken from either the third or the fourth layer and so on. I guess that's all about how the model structure is created. Now let's look at the loss function. The final loss is a weighted average of three separate components. Distillation loss is something which I have already explained in my previous video in detail. So the basic idea is we have the logits or 
predictions coming from both the teacher model and the student model. Uh, the largest coming from the teacher model is passed on to a softmax function with temperature and we get y. The largest come from the student model is also passed on to the software softmax function uh, with temperature to get y hat. And then we take a cross entropy loss between y and y hat. I have put a video link for cross entropy loss in the description in case you want to have a deeper understanding of this. Now let's look at the second component in the loss, masked language modeling or MLM loss. Masked language modeling is a task where we give an input sentence to the model, mask or hide few tokens, and the model is expected to output the complete original sentence that we gave. So thereby learning to guess the tokens that we have masked. Because in the process to try to guess the missing tokens, these models learn the relationships and characteristics between different tokens and finally end up understanding the semantics of all these tokens and how they occur in the sentences. So the loss computed on this task is called MLM loss. The final component is a cosine similarity loss where we take the cosine similarity of the hidden layer embeddings between the teacher and the student model. So you can say the first one and the third one are ways in which the teacher model is transferring knowledge to the student model. The weighted average of all these losses are taken to get the final loss which is used to backpropagate the student model. This allows faster learning for the students since the knowledge distillation is happening from the teacher model to the student model. I guess that's all I wanted to cover on Distal Bird. If you gained any value out of this video, please like, share and subscribe this. Questions, suggestions, definitely put it below in comments. See you next time with another video. Until then, adios.